we all stand, please, and receive the passion. The Lord of peace, my life. How did I make it? All these years. Whom shall I be? How did I make it? He's my strength. He's my living. Of the valleys. Of the valley. My right. I know it had to be God. And my right. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. Amen. How did I make it? Blessed to be in the house of worship. One more time. How did I make it through the rain? And you see, so many, not so many new faces, but faces like the faces I've seen. Right? That's how I got here. Right? That's how I got here. It's so easy to explain. Thank you, Lord. It was God's grace. It was God's grace. That could be before you too long. It was God's grace. Just long enough. Think about what's going on around you in the world. Come on out of that dream for a little bit. And let's get focused on where we're headed to. And that is eternal life. Because God is in the moving business. Now we've had some awful good times here at First Baptist. And we're still having greater times. But your presence makes the difference. And the difference today is... God is in the house. Amen. 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 Somebody Amen. say, Jesus is already here. Jesus, Jesus is already here. here. Thank you, the deacons, for that passage of scripture. Thank each of you for being a portion of the service up to this point. Any answer to the first ladies? You down at London, Virginia, on a task for the Lord. Not evaluating, but blessing a church uh, in the sense of uh, second national. Commitments that we have to monitor and look at churches and see the need. She has this church for her assignment, so we know she'll tell it how to do this. Uh, either way, but God is still in the bed. Thanks to the choir. Let's give the choir a hand. Amen. We need much prayer for the choir. Uh, just pray that God will continue to use us in a special way. Amen. With every head bowed, every eye. Close and our hearts focus on what God is about to do. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus. Amen. And above all, Master, we know that we we wouldn't be standing here if it had not been for what he did there on the cross. And for this we thank you. But as we attempt to work out our soul salvation, Lord, we ask that, that you would just use us in a special and a mighty way. Tear down the walls of doubt. Tear down the, the validity of things that Father that would stand in the way. Move the demons out of the way and drive them from this place that we may receive your word from on high. Cast our sins into the sea of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then most of all, Father, let us that have an ear hear what thus saith the Lord. Yes. And then, Father, as we leave this place on today in worship and in truth and in fellowship, let us lift our heads high, knowing that Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to us. Yes. This we ask in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let us say amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of the Our hearing, which was so vigorously read, has a word. It begins a series. Amen. Moving into our holiday season as we move now toward Palm Sunday and as we move in with scripture and Jesus in the midst of, of everything that we do. You've heard the story, amen, or no doubt saw the TV series 48 hours. Eddie Murphy did his thing. <laughs> Everybody seemed to like that. And no doubt the, the series and the movie pretty much rocked the world one way or another. We're turning the table a little bit different. 
Well, I'm not sure that everybody really understood the walk, the wonders, or the trip to Calvary. As a picture titled 48 Hours, this morning I want to just want you to think on this subject parallel with the scripture that was read. Instead of 48 hours, we're going to talk about 24 hours to redemption. 24 hours to redemption. Look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor. Amen. 24 hours. 24 hours. To redemption. To redemption. The word redemption itself means redeem. God saving us from our sins through his precious blood. But I want to, to display just a, a just a, a and you got to stay with me on this because uh, we want to look at the time frame and not lock it in by our watch, but in series or chronological order of how Jesus did what he did. But all that he did was within 24 hours. All right. hmm. 24 hours to redemption. First of all, I'd like for you to know that there are several things that occurred during this 24 hours. The Passover, which Jesus was arrested, crucified. We could discuss this through life or in our lifetime, but still, we would not be able to do what he did for us in this small amount of time for the redemption of our sins. Some of these that we may hear about in a few minutes is the very form of miraculous things that took place during this time frame. And while others of us, we strictly, uh, we want things by the numbers. And, but a whole lot of supernatural things took place within this 24 hours. Are you with me? And these events define and, and, and man give us real significance of the evidence, amen, that, that establishes the true identity of what this Jesus of Nazareth did for us. From the time somebody said that he was here to overthrow and become a king on his own until the time that he hung there on the cross. The text Amen, that was read. This statement, you can barely made it clear that this, this text is, is a direct reference of the Old Testament prophecies concerning the book of Exodus. There in the 12th chapter, on about the 46th verse, and you want to check again, look at Zechariah 12, amen, and 10, and, and you want to just keep on checking, just read a little bit further. However, Jesus says, come on somebody, himself that everything that transpired within this 24 hours was all just to give us redemption for our sins. Amen. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Well, thus, today would be probably correctly to say that these things were done. Uh, that scripture, amen, that would be filled and be fulfilled in the very sink of time. Let's look at the sequence of events. First of all, it was early or late evening, about 6 p.m. On about, in approximately, the Passover began there in the upper room. Busy week. Things were going. And this is 6 p.m. Somebody say 6 p.m. That's evening time. That's afternoon, dinner time, break time, time out, whatever you want to call it. But it was about 6 p.m. Somebody take me to Matthew 26 and 20. 
And when you find it, jump to your feet vigorously and read it. And read it like you have a Savior on the inside of you. When you found it, just read it out. Now when the evening was come, he right. sat down. What did you say? Now when it was? The evening. It wasn't morning. It wasn't noon. Amen. Evening. Somebody say 6 p.m. again. 6 p.m. <laughs> Don't y'all look bored on me. It. It's a purpose. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. He sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he <laughs> said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall be Good God Almighty. My God, my God. Thus begins the Passover time. Jesus sitting there in the evening time, already prophecy being fulfilled. The upper room was the beginning of the 24-hour period. Somebody say 24 hours. 24 hours. To redemption. redemption. The sad part about this, I don't want to discourage you on this, but this is realistic. Not only this day and time, this is World War II thousand years later, we can't forget what started this whole redemptive measure and what Jesus was about to do, uh, amen, for you and I. 24 hours to redemption, meaning that there's more than he had to go through. But that was the beginning. But even at the beginning, it starts out with somebody what? That is going to betray you. Do I have a witness? Amen. amen. Then Jesus institutes right there in that upper room the Lord's Supper. Go to Luke 22 and 20. Somebody else find John 13 and 30. Because you're going to help me preach this this morning. Yeah. Luke 22 and 20. John 13 and 30. This is why on this day that we're celebrating the Lord's Supper, that we shouldn't take it lightly in no way, shape, or form. That's why it reminds us that as often as we do this, we show forth death and he shall come in. That's why we want to do this in remembrance of me. So we don't just take communion just to be taken. But we're just trying to be a materialistic Christian My God. or a habit-forming individual that wants to pick up the wafer and the wine and drink it. He instituted it. The Lord's Supper. He told us to do this. He started with his disciples. So it's no way possible that you're a believer in Christ that you can take communion ever like that. Not if he's on the inside. Can I get a witness? Listen to what Luke has to say. Anyhow. Likewise, also the cup after sup, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. In whose blood? In my blood. In whose blood? In my blood. Who is this talking? Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Which is shared for you. My God. He's talking to you and I. Mm -hmm. He's saying, Williams, Burns, mm -hmm. Babe, mm -hmm. Great, yes, teacher. Lord, mm -hmm. Dino. Thank you, Lord. I'm doing this for you. Yeah. He's forecasting what he's going to do. Not with his blood, but through his blood. Can I get a witness? Are you there? Yes. Now the teaching side of this, never should we ever take for granted the hours that we're walking around during the day. Because every minute, every moment belongs to God. Yes. You're not here by osmosis. We're not here just by grace and mercy. We're here because it was already forecast that within these 24 hours, yes. he would give up yes. his life yes. for you and I. Somebody say 24 hours. 24 hours. To redemption. redemption. Look what John has to say in 13 and 20. Correction, 13 and 30. Read it out. First, the upper room, the Lord's Supper. Have you got it? Somebody should go ahead, sister. Jesus answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sake. He what? Not because he's already telling us. He's doing it for whom? For you and I. Are you there? Amen. 
Read it one more time. John 13 and 30. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Ooh. Somebody say hallelujah. Now, the upper room was at six. The Lord's Supper was around 11, somewhere. Huh? Late in the evening. And I know you've seen many photos which look like they're in daylight. But they were, this was 11 at night. So Jesus was at work while some of us are still asleep. Amen. Can I get a witness? It doesn't stop there. Through the night, he knew what he had to face. Within this 24 hours, it would soon come to the place where a very famous passage of scripture, we often hear him say, Lord, not my will, but let thy will be done. Amen. We've got to learn how to deny ourselves <coughs> to take up the cross and follow him. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. It was on about midday there at Gethsemane, 12 noon. Still within a 24 hour period. He went to the garden of Gethsemane to pray. Look at Luke 23, 38 and 40. If you got a pen in the building, you need a Follow it, write it down. If you don't get it today, do it when you go home. This is no faith. Amen. This 24 hours to redemption was some suffering, some giving, some mercy, some grace. And I don't know, most of all, it was his love for you and I. Huh? Look what happened at that symbol. Within this 24 hours. Now this was 12 noon. The next day. But it's still within the 24 hour period. Yes. Somebody said, preacher, where are you getting all these times? You dig in the street, scripture long enough. God will give you not only others, but he'll give you. The idea here is it's not so much to look at the time, but in one day, Jesus redeemed your soul. Amen. That you might be saved. Amen. Are you, are you with me? Amen. What did he do at Gethsemane? He went there to pray. There in the 23rd chapter, a man you'll find these words in 38 to 40. Let the whole church stand up and one person read this. But see, he was not only praying, he could have called a host of angels. But instead, these are the words that he uttered for you and I. And to understand what he's doing within this 24 hour period, we ought to take it home with us. Well, most of all, right now, in the name of Jesus, take it deep within our hearts. Somebody read that. And the superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? Do you believe that he is the Son of God? Amen. You really believe it? Amen. There's no question about it. Amen. Thank you, see. Now, in the course of the upper room, from the upper room to the Lord's Supper, and from the Lord's Supper, amen, to Gethsemane, his spirit is still moving, knowing the, not the agony of defeat, but his spirit is still telling us not only why, but 
But because he loved us so much yes. that he was willing to endure the cross. Now, that was at 12 noon. On about 2 o'clock, the Bible tells us that he was ar arrested and taken before him. There in John 18, it makes it clear. After that, he was brought before Caiaphas in the book of John, on about the 18th chapter. That was in the evening of that same day, after he had went to Gethsemane, at 2 o'clock, arrested, and at, by 3 o'clock, <laughs> Jesus, he was brought before Caiaphas. About 5.30. Jesus was condemned by the Sanhedrin court. My Lord. Still within the 24 hours. 5.30. Your Savior, our God, was condemned. That was just the Sanhedrin. They knew they couldn't get away with it. Still working within that 24 hours. The Bible tells us he was brought before Pilate. When he came before Pilate, this was the first time. After Pilate came Herod. Six o'clock at Pilate. Six thirty at Herod. By seven thirty, he went back to Pilate. And that's when he began to get the beating, the scorn. 30 million other things that haven't even been recorded. Mm -hmm. But he did it all because he knew he had to do it within the 24 hours for yours and my redemption. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Back to Pilate. Once Pilate, you heard the story well. Barabbas was a cruel man that murdered and killed people. But the crowd chose Jesus. When the question was asked by Pilate, which one should we crucify? Don't wait till Easter to understand this story. Just take 24 hours out of your day and you'll see what Jesus not only did for you as prophecy and scripture was fulfilled, but what he did is greater than what you could ever imagine. Yes. That's why we can't take the breath that we have for granted. Amen. We can't take the work that we have for granted. Amen. We can take nothing for granted because in 24 hours, he delivered your soul yes. and mine. Yes. Step by step. Yeah. Yeah. Pilate had his situation there and when he said which one shall we crucify he pointed at Barabbas and he pointed to Jesus now the crowd <laughs> said crucify Jesus I don't understand that. But the Holy Spirit does. See, in that day, kings was a going thing. And Jesus was a threat to the kings. Amen. So the crowd wanted somebody they could maneuver and keep on living the way that they wanted to live. But Jesus was king of kings. Yes, he was. And Lord of lords. Yes. They didn't understand his kingship because it was eternal. They were only living for now. Nothing personal, but we reference the president as ruling the nation. You got to put yourself in that time. We've had X number of presidents, and not every one of them dealt the same way. The crowd thought that they would choose him. Oh, no, this is perfect time. <laughs> that they would have their way. And before these next four years are out, you will understand what this message was all about. Oh the crowd wanted who is in office now. But the crowd is 
God's going to understand sooner or later. Come on. It's not going to work out. Y'all don't hear me. I call on me, but look, it's not, not what you see. They did not recognize or see who the real king was or why he came or what the purpose was because they were only thinking for now. But the Bible teaches us to focus on the future. And that is eternal life. Can I get a witness? Yes. We're living in right now with we settled in our seats, but I understand that <laughs> this Savior was beaten. The bad part about it is he wasn't just beaten like any other crucified. Crucifixions in that day was cruel. Mm -hmm. But my Lord and Savior, the whip that they had, had leather base tied to it. And yes. rivets of ease and sharp things of obstacles where they place it together and bend it and put it all in twines and carry it on just so they could like this. This guy's going to suffer like nobody else has because he thinks he's a king. And as the scripture gave us utterance that the Holy Spirit is leading us even right now the Bible already told us that he would bear our burdens in the heat of the day. This was, this was after Pilate had, even in, he wasn't even in his right mind when he did what he did. And there's scripture in the Bible that will lead us. But being beaten with this leather sharp edges and for each strike that he took was for your sins and mine. And no doubt that we live too loosely in our lives yes, we do. Yes. to understand what each strike meant. But once you're saved, you begin to understand what he really did for you. Yes. Especially when you're bottled up in your sin. And your way of living, your style of life, and the redemptive side of what Jesus did for you doesn't really matter because you don't know him as your personal Savior. But once you begin to know him as your personal Savior, this 24 hours will become a realization to your life. Because yes. every day is supposed to be sweeter. Help me somebody. Than the day before. But well, therefore, when I was on my sick bed, yes. he picked me up. Yes. Yes. When I was down oh, and could not get up, oh, it was Jesus who brought me out. Yes. When I couldn't find my way yes. in a dark and cruel world, yes. it was Jesus. Yes. Every strike, yes. every time he got beaten, yes. that made it possible mm -hmm. for me to be redeemed yes. and become a portion of this 24 hour. Pilate sat back and he knew that he was wrong. But yet he condemned him. This was about 7.30 in the morning. Overnight, still within a 24 hour period. On about nine o'clock, Jesus was laid between these two pieces of wood nailed to the cross. Somebody say 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Your God it was a famous place of crucifixion and burials. And you would vision the highway into the city was lined with thieves and robbers who had been crucified. But Jesus had not done nothing but die for your sins and mine. Yes. Are you there? Yes. I didn't come to put you on a guilt trip, but you need to think about this. 24 hours to redemption. The Bible tells us and makes it clear they're hung in between two thieves. 
on about 9 o'clock. According to the Bible, he just didn't die instantly. But things begin to happen around him. According to the word, somebody find Mark 15 and verse 34. While at 9 o'clock, by noon, this miraculous thing happens. Now we've seen tornadoes, hurricanes, really some weird weather in this day and time, but nothing compared to what took place when our Savior hung there on the cross. Look, listen what the word says. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Hilo, Hilo, Lama Sabachthani. What, which is being interpreted, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? This was about noon when he cried out. Still, he was suffering there on the cross. Most theologians and Bible thumpers and believe, believe that he died right there, but it wasn't then that he died. It was on about three o'clock. In the afternoon, help me somebody, and he died there on the cross. Yes. And if you want evidence, you want proof, go to Matthew 27, on about verse 50. And not only did darkness fill the whole land from noon up until 3 o'clock, Things begin to happen all around. But look what happened at 3 p.m. in the the evening. Just before evening. We move it into closure of the 24-hour period. Remember it was 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. the day before. Within this, in the 24-hour period started with the Passover. Now it's getting close. Amen. To 6 p.m the next day, but within a 24-hour period. Somebody shout, 24 hours to redemption. 24 hours to redemption. Read that for us there. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice. I'm sorry. Look at the word. He cried the first time at noon. Are you there? Yes. Well, this is deeper than what you think it is. But the, he just read when Jesus cried when? Amen. Again. Amen. So from 12 to 3, he did a whole lot of suffering. My God, help us. Jesus. For you and me. Amen. My God, if that don't save you, nothing will. We can't take this lightly. I'm sorry. You, you go ahead. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, you left the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple. Huh? Uh oh. You all right? The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake. And the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared to me. Listen, thank you, Holy Ghost. At three, he dies on the cross. The same time, he just read it. At three, simultaneously. The veil of the temple? Huh? Somebody say veil. Veil. Meaning that's where the priest used to come before people could go mm -hmm. give remission of the sin. That's yes. why we can't just, you can't, man cannot get your sins washed away. Amen. Jesus Amen. came to wash all of us. The supreme sacrifice was Jesus for every one of us. Not only did he talk about the veil, he just read that sign at 3 o'clock, Lord have mercy, the earthquake came. Huh? Not only did the earthquake come, it was dark, earthquake, then bodies start coming up out of the ground. 
Now I want you to hold on to that thought. Because when he comes back, good God from Zion. When he comes back to return, to pick up his train, the Bible says the dead, then Christ is going to rise. A different story. All because this 24 hours of redemption was for you and I. Thank you, Jesus. A deeper story. And the rod and the staff. God is trying to show us the first shall be last. He's the beginning and the end. God, about that time, Scripture had already told us that they wasn't going to break his leg, but they broke the thieves' leg. Two thieves, legs were broken on about 3.30. This is after the earthquake and all this other good stuff. I had to sit down on that one. That's too much happening in one moment. But if he can save your soul in the twinkling of an eye, he's doing a whole lot for us right now on about that time. The Bible tells us he was crushed in the side. It's in the book of instruction. 3.30. The legs are broken. About 3.45, 15 minutes. Maybe somebody wanted to have proof that he was dead. It was finished. But he had already said it is finished when he slumped his head. Palms of his shoulder. He had finished the work that he came to do. Are you praying? Yes. We're almost through. The Roman soldier, all about that time. Somebody find John 19 and 33. Because you need to think on this. 33 through 36 will tell us the story. And you'll understand the piercing in the side wasn't just what the Roman soldier did. The scripture had already told us that this would take place. Huh? When you're found to be going to just stand up and read bigger story. Everybody should know this. But Jesus wasn't playing when he went to the cross. Go ahead, sir. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Mm. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith, that what he saith is true, that he might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. Should be for what? Fulfilled. Amen. Listen. I don't know how to tell you this no other way than by way of the Holy Spirit. The Roman soldier that pierced him in the side mm -hmm. was the same Roman soldier that ended up following Jesus mm -hmm. after the ascension. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. what, what, what are you saying, Pastor? <laughs> I, I really want you to understand, if you don't understand nothing else about this 24 hour period, that when they thrush that Spear into his side. Look at what happened and listen and feel the importance of baptism. What came out wasn't just blood, it was blood and water. Understood that the body has fluid, but not like what is described here. Blood and water. Amen. Doesn't that send a message? Yes. yes. It should send a powerful message. Because right. when we, through his blood, we take on, as a believer, baptized first in his blood, but showing the world by way of water that we're followers of Christ. Yes. Prophecy being fulfilled. <clears throat> 
right before our very eyes. And somehow we still go down in the water thinking that the water is going to save us. No, it doesn't. It is the blood of Jesus that was shed for you. That saved your soul. And we've got to believe that through his blood that was shed within this 24-hour period is the blood, sweat, the tears, the pain and suffering that brings us our redemption. Finally, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is removed hastily to a nearby garden. And as well as you know the story, by 5.30, he was buried in the tomb. This was on a Friday. So that almost tells you that the Passover started on a what? On a Thursday. Forget about the calendar months. Focus on the 24 hours. That's where your blessing is. From that portion, that time on, and for you to understand, that your redemption took 24 hours of this Savior's life just so you could be set free. Free from bondage. And from bondage to redemption. Amen. And if I would say another word today, these wonders of Calvary that came in, the, in these 24 hours is one of the most powerful stories ever told by inspired men of God from different passages of the Bible that tell you and I that this is no plaything. Right. That you're not here because of osmosis and 50 million other reasons, but you're here because God has already paid the price for your presence. Amen. Can I get away? Can somebody real quick as your neighbor? Yeah. Yeah. This is not 48 hours. This is not 48 hours. This is 24 hours. Somebody say 24 hours. 24 hours. I'm going to say 24 hours like you know it. 24 hours. 24 hours. Your Savior, my God, did this for you and I. But when you think about the time of the day, on about 3, on about noon, on about 5.30. You can go any portion of the day that you want. You'll still find out that Jesus is the reason for your being. Yeah. And as the sister said just a few minutes ago, he's the reason for the season. Think on it. Pray on it. But these wonders of Calvary that took place within 24 hours. Chronologically, you should understand and all that Jesus did, all that you may have redemption. If he paid the price, why can't you just take the gift and walk in the newness of life? If he paid the price so severely with these events that took place and everything that went around, go back and check the scripture out. We have earthquakes Tornadoes, and we have our own comments. I'll get ready to go about what and why we think is going on. But let me tell you something: <laughs> when Jesus died there on the cross, the entire earth was dark. It wasn't just in Kansas, South Carolina, North Carolina, or even Brazil. The entire earth was dark. And when we talk about bodies coming up out of the ground, we talk about bodies all over the place. Everywhere you look. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And this is no horror story. This is no ghost story. This is reality. God within man was trying to show us something that we should never forget. He was trying to show those that crucified him that you don't know who you've been messing with. Help me somebody. You don't know what you have no idea 
what is about to take place. Prophecy being fulfilled is for the goodness and for your eternity. For we shall forever be with God. What a price. Look at somebody one more time. Did you say neighbor? Neighbor. It was 24 hours. It was 24 hours. When he set me free. When he set me free. Give God a hand clap. May God bless you in heaven. Now, when you be dealing with that 24 hours right into Palm Sunday. And from this portion on, you need to bring a neighbor with you back to church because before these four Sundays are out, you're going to realize that it's just not the main Easter that we're celebrating here, but it's the duration of our lives and our total redemptive freedom that God brought to each one of us personally. I cannot go to heaven for Sister Mary. I've got to go for myself. Amen. Sister Bailey cannot go to heaven for me. I've got to go for myself. So there's no need of dying and going to hell when Jesus has already paid the ticket for you to go to heaven. Amen. Huh? Amen. <laughs> Look at somebody serious in the name of there's no need for me to go to hell. Give God a hand clap of praise. We're going to ask Minister Burns to come. Give our invitation to Christian discipleship. And I tell you, in 24 hours, one of us might not even be here. Because all time belongs to God. It may not be from 6 to 6 the next day. God is plucking flowers every day. But he's plucking the good as well as the bad. He's cleaning up. Getting ready for his coming back. Your objective is to be ready as best you can when he comes. Neighbor, what I'm trying to say is you don't have time. Whether it be 24 or 48, 58, 92. We ought to take our lives and move one day at a time. 24 hours to your redemption. Let us stand to our feet. Amen. You have heard this week. And when Jesus come back, if the day that Christ arrives, those that remain shall be caught up. Today is redemption for somebody today. If not faith, when they get up out of this seat and come forward and give their life to Christ, in faith, believing in a Savior who long glad is died on the cross, and confess with them all, believe in them all, that Jesus has died for them. Today is the day of salvation. Will there be one on my right? Or will there be one on my left? Amen. Anybody require a special prayer? Rededication? Or just need some strength with him? There's nothing to walk with God.